reach that level. I can reach that level. Um, so it's been super fun because, you know, I didn't even think that this was possible. Good afternoon and welcome to the Reflective Coach Podcast with Coach Luca. In this episode, we feature female professional soccer player, Addison Willer. Addison Willer came from California, USA, majoring in child development. Addison's career and personal life is more like a holiday that would feature in a film, rather than this reali realistic journey that she has been on. Addison has enjoyed much of her time in her personal and professional life and has enjoyed many key experiences. Sometimes, for many footballers, going out abroad, looking for this dream, working hard, can lead to isolation and, and loneliness. It can be so difficult on the constant move and going around different countries, experience various cultures and having to adapt to climate change, these cultures, different people, the relationships, language barriers. The list goes on just on the move alone. And this doesn't even go into the move to the club and how difficult that can be. But everything that Addison talks about and the way she comes across in this episode and interview, she has taken it in a stride and has only turned it into a positive. She has absolutely loved every moment of her career to date. She has had a wonderful experience and a wonderful time and has been out to some amazing countries. Just coming from California, USA alone is an amazing story within itself. Just to be out there in California is, is a dream to many. But she has come from California and left it. She pursued a soccer career and has gone out to FC Malaga in Spain. From there, she played as a central defender, winning the league and making a semi to the cup. She became a success story for the academy and achieved a record of 28 wins, one draw and one loss. Addison has achieved many accolades in that time. She has achieved Most Valuable Player twice, CIF Athlete of the Year nominee. She earned First Team All League Honours twice in all city honours twice, received all county honourable mention. She competed in soccer, volleyball and softball, which has complemented her attitude towards sports and her outlook. She has also continued to earn many other accolades, such as in the 2016-17 CCAA All Academic Award. She then achieved that again in 2017 and 2018 for her second straight academic year. In 2018, she earned all California Athletic Association Honourable Mention. She also earned the CCAA All Academic Award for the third year in a row. She also earned the CCAA Fall Academic Award. In 2019, she earned second team All California Athletic Association Honours. She was then quoted as one of the best conference defenders in that period. She has also gone on to achieve Under-17 Elite Girls 2015 US Youth Soccer Far West Region's 4th Champions. It has been an amazing experience for Addison and she has won so much. She has her own blog which is fantastic to listen to and you can find out more within the episode. And she talks about 5 key skills. So listen to this episode, find out more about Addison, where she's been and those experiences. It was wonderful to speak to her and a really enjoyable experience. Good luck, Addison, and thank you for your time. But this is the Reflective Coach Podcast with Coach Luca. You can listen to it on YouTube, Spotify, Anchor, and Podcast Addict. You can also find it on LinkedIn and Twitter. This, again, is Coach Luca. Enjoy this episode, and thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so how's your day been? How, how's it gone so far? Good. Um, we had a little training session this morning, just recovery because we had a game yesterday. And then we we travel tomorrow um, for an away game. So kind of just preparing for that as well. But yeah, so far it's been good. I know it's nighttime for you guys. How, how's your day been? <laughs> I know on the flip side of that, you know, you're, you're sort of halfway through your day at 12 and then I'm comprehending like mm -hmm. I'm at 8 p.m. in the evening. But, you know, it's not been too bad. It's been quite nice. Um, as it has been, I had another interview with you this morning, and you know, on a bit of annual leave, so it's been nice to have that day, and I've been looking forward to this. So, uh, but the time frames in my head has been constant. Like I was waking up this morning, panicking, and I was like, "Oh, she, she's messaged, and I, have I got the times right?" So all day long, I've been checking the time <laughs> all day long. 
I know that time that time change gets confusing because I used to be in Serbia where we were on the same time zone and now that I'm back here it's it's weird to have to adjust when I'm talking to my family we're in the same time zone I'm like oh I can't believe they're up right now but then I remember oh wait we're, <laughs> we're in the same time zone now yeah so it's, it's just funny. a readjustment mm -hmm. exactly so it, it, let's flip it back to you know obviously you know uh, how it all started and where it you know came from and you studied at California mm -hmm. State University which is you know pretty amazing in itself uh well yeah Cal State LA um that's where I studied and played soccer for four and a half years um and yeah it was a great experience um living in LA was definitely <laughs> it was fun at times a lot of traffic but um it was great and made so many awesome connections with my teammates and um it was a huge commuter school but there was also a lot of um, people from different countries um that played on the sports team so it was really fun getting to know them and still really great friends with them to this day so yeah happy i went there I, and it was a, i learned a lot soccer wise football wise and you know that's great to hear you know maintaining those relationships mm -hmm. can be really important especially when you go abroad and you know it, it, you can exactly. be isolated at times when you are abroad um mm -hmm. but just you know to have you know someone on the end of the phone you know one of the girls that you played with the ring and stay in touch with can really help mm -hmm. overcome those you know hidden adversities as such when you look you know when it can be lonely yeah definitely it's been it's been nice to have them and you know now if i want to go visit these cool places like norway or sweden i have people to stay with and tour guides and just being able to keep friends with them which has been really really fun and you know that that's an you know amazing horizon which opens up on a, a social side and long term. You know, even you know when mm -hmm. you, you say you could retire way into your thirties, and you know you've got a family by then, and you, you you've got family life and football. You know, is maybe the back footer then, and then you suddenly you've got all these opportunities to take your kids around the world and give them the experiences and sort of talk about you know things that you've done, which is you know pretty amazing to establish long term as a benefit as a player. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And super cool experience and, you know even when you talk about these places just you know on the flip side of that when from an outsider's point of view when you think that you know cali and you've been out there in los angeles you know they're pretty core cool places to sort of just come from and be around in itself i know my best friend uh moved from where i live in, in wales and he lives out in cali and he's always texting me pictures on a palm beach playing basketball yeah. and i'm like oh <laughs> mate you, you're really selling it to me <laughs> exactly yeah yeah definitely when people hear that i played in la from other countries they're like oh my gosh like that is so cool and for me it's kind of just like oh you know it happened it, it's normal but for people all around the world los angeles is such a, a point a destination that they want to go to so badly and the fact that i lived there they're like what that's crazy how was it so, yeah, it, it is cool. It, it's a cool experience to have lived there and played there. Absolutely. And I'm not sure whether you've ever heard of the, the player, Gareth Bale. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, obviously his contract expired with Real Madrid at the end of this year. And uh, he had a chance to come back home to Cardiff and play for them. And, you know, they, I think, you know, they were offering like 25k a week. Um, and then he had the opportunity to go mm -hmm. to Los Angeles and play out there for the, the club out there. And a yeah. lot of people were like, oh, well, he's just doing that for the money. And I was like, well, I think it's a little bit more than the money. Cardiff or Los Angeles, <laughs> really. I think there's no contrast. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly gotta experience that <laughs> absolutely and you know there's there's always that talk of you know the game in america is always growing um and that you know they're trying to develop it especially at grassroots and you know a lot of male players who come from britain go across there especially towards you know the end of their careers as such but in that sense is the female game growing as rapidly as the male game in america oh absolutely it has grown so so much and i think the nwsl um is one of the best in the world right now um, definitely one of the top top leagues and i hope to one day play there too um, but right now i'm just kind of growing as a player and i really just i love traveling and experiencing no, new culture so being able to play is the best way to do that um, but yeah it's growing significantly in the u.s i know um, now there's higher pay for players and yeah it, you're able to actually have a career 
um, if you make it to that level, which is really awesome. You know, it's, it's you know it's great to hear because you 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 know you want that you know from a player's perspective, especially when you've come from the system that's out there. And quite a lot of the interviewees this week I've spoken to are all from America, um, and it, you know you've all got a, you know a similar story in that sense and background. And you know the accolades you all have each, and you know I was reading through yours earlier, and you've got a list of accolades which are truly amazing to you and it's a fantastic achievement. And when you've got all these, you know, young females coming through and they've got this amazing, you know, system which are coming through in terms of education, they've got these accolades, they have this amazing program and then they have to go abroad away from America to sort of, you know, pursue, mm -hmm. you know, professional contract. It sort of contradicts at times the amazing educational pathway that's in america if the game wasn't at that level to progress as many females that are achieving as many accolades as they have been yeah absolutely mm -hmm. and it's that pathway you know which sets that standard and you know contributes to everything that you go through in terms of that commitment and all those accolades that you achieve and you know but on the flip side of that going away and going abroad and having those amazing experiences you know you've been out in malaga which was a fantastic experience within itself and again another fantastic yeah. place to go yeah that was so fun i felt like i was on vacation for 10 months of my life <laughs> yeah it, it was it's been so fun being able to travel but i know so many players like because they think playing in the U.S. is the only option and it's such a high level that you really have to be like one of the highest division one players in order to get picked up right after college. Um, that many players just stop right after right after college because they, they just don't even know how to get recruited or know that they can continue playing. Um, so, yeah, th that is difficult. And, you know, there's so many players that are a lot better than me honestly and uh finishing college they they just stopped playing and me i kind of just knew that i needed to push through and find navigate some way to do it and that's the reason why i'm here today is because i just you know i realized that i was just gonna have to find it myself and a lot of players just don't do that um and so that's why they stopped playing you know, and I was reading into your blog, which was, you know, really, you know, insightful in itself. And I hope that it continues. Oh, thank you. And, you know, I was, I, it was opened up, you know, the five skills that you talk about, you know, positive self-talk, self-reliance, outgoing, mm -hmm. self-awareness, breaking and creating habits, you know, are mm -hmm. all, you know, key skills to really take away and to, to realize them whilst you're on your journey and, and you know, have that self-reflection, you know, and, and relating mm -hmm. it to the girls who have given up is, it, you know they need to sort of realize those those skills as soon as possible from a young age to pursue those dreams. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for reading the blog. I didn't realize that it's, it's reached so many people. I need to get back on that <laughs> since coming. I mean, I've been so busy with the big change the past uh, three or past month. I, I haven't been writing as much, but I need to need to update the blog for sure <laughs> no yeah it's definitely you know it's great to have that blog and you know, i was reading into it and then suddenly you delved into it and you know was able to find out more about you and was like wow this is really mm -hmm. interesting and you know incredible journey cool. uh-huh yeah thank you appreciate it that's right no problems and you know you talk about you know sharing uh you know a space with 13 girls and then suddenly you know there's you go out abroad to somewhere else and then you're, you're on your own and you know how different that can be and the contrast in that yeah, it every experience, every country has been a completely, I feel like I've lived so many different lives. Like I think about my Spain experience and just, uh, just, yeah, so much fun. And then going to Serbia was also really fun, but it was definitely more of a, um, like a reflective period for me because I was living alone. And now this experience in Mexico, it's completely different as well. I'm, I'm not living alone. I'm with people more of the time. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's completely different than it was in Serbia and in Spain too. So it, it's been cool. It's, you know, you learn so much in each of those different experiences and it helps you grow as a player and a person. And, you know, so. would you recommend Serbia as a place to go in itself? I honestly would. Um, traveling alone there it's probably the best spot if you want to be a solo traveler because the people there are so friendly and welcoming. I met like the most amazing group of friends just from 
going out and they kind of just like took me under their wing and invited me everywhere. We'd go get coffee and they're some of my best friends and they had, they don't play soccer at all. Like I just met them on the streets and uh, yeah, I miss them. I miss them a lot. So definitely as a solo traveler, you'll be able to make friends and it's a really, really safe, safe country too. Like um, walking alone at night, I had like, I felt completely safe, completely fine. In Mexico, it's been a little bit of a different story. But um, yeah, Serbia is a place that's really beautiful too. Um, really great food as well. You know, and that, that's great to hear, oh. especially, you know, meeting people, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, away from the game um, and just in that personal life and, your, your, you know, your own pathway and journey. Because, you know, off the, you know, our topic this week is the adversities and challenges behind the scenes, which people don't see, you know, such as moving away, going abroad, being mm -hmm. on your own you know, the cost of travel out of your own pocket to try and find it and try and secure those contracts and, you know, living from hotel room to hotel room because you're traveling for away games at times and all that kicks in and then suddenly you're on a different accommodation, you have a new group of people. And the list of challenges just in itself of a footballer, you know, is endless. And, you know, a lot of people don't yeah. see that. No, not at all. You have to be so adaptable and just kind of be ready for any situation <laughs> that occurs because you know traveling in itself is so stressful and so many problems come come up in regards to that so you kind of just have to go with the flow and not have these like grand expectations because you really have no idea what you're going to get yourself into with a new country and and everything and also when you're going into a new country you really have to adapt to the culture I think you know, that's the best way to make yourself feel at home and have others, uh, other people really respect you if you try and learn the language and, you know, are interested in the culture. So, yeah, you definitely can't be stuck in your ways um, in order to, you know, feel welcomed and feel at home in a new area. And so at the moment where you're out in Mexico, have you secured mm -hmm. a contract in Mexico? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I secured a contract. I'll be here for a year. Um, and yeah, we, we already started season, so been playing in games and we just had a game yesterday and a game on, on a ga game on Monday and we play on Sunday. So it's been crazy just traveling and playing. We're fully, fully in it. It's been so fun so far. And, and, and what's the weather like out there at the moment? How, how hot is it? Um, it, it's pretty warm. It's probably in the seventies and eighties most days. Um, so actually where I'm locating, it's called Tijuana, which is right on the border from California. So this is the closest I am like uh, to home because I live in California in Santa Barbara. That's where my hometown is. So I'm four hours away from home, which is completely different than, you know, a, a 14 hour plane flight across the world. So it, it, it's been nice being so close being so close to home you know and that, you know it's really nice to have that opportunity of you know only being four hours away just in case you know anything was to happen where you know you psychologically even that or something physically happened then you're like right family's only four hours away i'm not on the other side of the world exactly yeah it, it's definitely more comfortable <laughs> And, you know, when people talk about going out to different leagues, such as, you know, they, they go out to Italy and they say it's really defensive out there. And sometimes, you know, they, they say they come to England, it's really competitive. And, you know, they might go out to, I don't know, say Germany, and they say it's really attacking. How would you, you know, describe the football in Mexico? I would say it's definitely more an uh, offensive mindset, definitely. Um, and I'm trying to trying to compare it to to other other countries i guess uh you know being technical is also um is also very popular out here a lot of passing and then it is pretty aggressive too um people going hard for tackles but definitely offensive mindset yeah it's been fun it's been fun to play out here you know and that's great to hear because you do play as a defender mm -hmm. and uh you know that, you know, sudden change of system in terms of, you know, might be, you know, more an offensive defender, you know, playing out from the back, receiving mm -hmm. the ball compared to like a limited defender, you know, just your standard defending, clearing the ball, getting rid, jumping yourself into tackles can really have that, you know, exactly. change in, in the way that you play um, and, you know, the way that you need to adapt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
it definitely helps you grow as a player. And uh, playing against some really, really good forwards is only going to make me make me better, definitely. And uh, in that sense, when you do score a goal, do you get that enjoyment even more because you're not up front scoring as many as a striker, for example? Do you have that, you know, twice as much buzz because this is limited? <laughs> uh, I would say it, it's probably the same amount. I mean, no matter scoring goal is just the best feeling ever. And I'm sure the forwards have the same amount of excitement too. <laughs> You know, you just have that, like, explosive energy the second it goes, hits the back of the net. Um, yeah, I would say it's the same. But I, I definitely get really excited when I do score a goal. And when you get really excited, which you can quite clearly see, when you score that goal, would you take, at the end of your career, more goals or more clean sheets? Oh, I don't know. I mean, as a defender, more clean sheets is important to me. But... And I hope I have more more clean sheets than goals because that's my job at the end of the day is for other teams not to score. But I, I always am in the box for corner kicks and set plays because I'm good with my head. So I, I'm happy I get to get in the attack and hopefully score some headers. Um, and I do usually every season score a couple header goals. So I'm hoping hoping for more this season too. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, they, they can only add up very quickly as well. Absolutely. And, you know, by playing as a defender, did you start out as a defender? No, not at all. I actually, I changed as a center defender my junior year of college. So I was a forward, a striker, um, my entire career until junior year of college. And it just wasn't really clicking with me. I think, like, having my back towards the player, I, I just didn't hold the ball well. And so my college coach... Um, he said, Hey, we're, we're going to try something new. And he switched me to center back and that's where everything just clicked. Everything clicked. And then I had a really good, cause I redshirted my freshman year. So my red shirt junior and senior year, um, I just, I just took off as a player and that's when I realized, Oh, like, I think I can continue playing after college. Um, so it was never really a dream of mine to go professional until like maybe four years ago. And so every year it's kind of like, oh, I can reach that level. I can reach that level. Um, so it's been super fun because, you know, I didn't even think that this was possible. You know, it, and you, you didn't even think that, you know, when you're young being changed in that position. And, you know, when it comes to a sense of, right, your coach has changed, you said, right, you're going to play central defender now. And uh, you, you could mm -hmm. have said, no, I want to stay as a striker. Striker is my position is for me. But that one change in position and this led to you having a professional career just shows yeah. just that little adaptation opens up uh, that potential exactly yeah i just wanted to play so i was like i you know before i i was like who the heck would want to be a defender like that sucks as a forward too like having to play back on on defense i'm like oh this is so annoying like i i do not like this um but i just gave it a shot because i trusted my coaches and i just i just wanted to play because i wasn't getting that much play time because as a forward i just i wasn't doing the job that they needed me to do and, uh, you know, I was willing to do whatever it took to get play time. And so, yeah, changing it really, really opened up so many doors. And, yeah, I'm really happy I decided to just stick with it and give it a shot because, yeah, I wouldn't be here today <laughs> without that change. No, absolutely. And, you know, it's just great that you are, are here today, you know, that you've made a career from it so far and you're continuing to develop. And, you know, how young were you before you started playing, you know, soccer? I was four years old when I started playing, but I didn't take it too seriously, you know, just playing AYSO, which is the, you know, the youth league out here or in California. Um, but then it wasn't until my sophomore, junior year of high school where I, I started really liking it and thinking I could play, play in college. And so my junior year is when I started playing club, club soccer. And um, that's when I got recruited to go play for Cal State LA. And, you know, that's great. And, you know, I was doing some reading and you, you have, you know, this a varied interest in terms of other sports and other activities such mm -hmm. as snowboarding and spike ball. Um, and the key yeah. question there is, what is spike ball? Oh, my gosh, you have to play spike ball. It's so fun. It's basically this little trampoline and you are with a teammate and you're playing against two two other people. 
And it's kind of like volleyball where, well, you hit it against the trampoline and it bounces. And then the other team has three touches and you could only use one hand. So you pop it in the air, your teammate pops it in the air, and then the other person hits it back down on the trampoline. And then the other team tries to retrieve it. And so if, if you miss the trampoline and it doesn't hit it, or um, the other team can't pop it in the air, then it's a point and you play it until 21 and it gets super, super intense. And it's really, it's such a fun game to, you know, play at the park or play at the beach. Um, yeah, it's a really fun activity. And, you know, just even describing it sounds intense, but quite fun at the same time. And do you think you've yeah. taken some aspects of that into your game in terms of that reaction time, that intensity, the way you think, the way you process, etc.? I don't think spike ball plays too much of a role in that because I don't play it like that often, but playing volleyball and softball in high school, I think really helped, um, helped my game soccer wise um, just because I was an outfielder. And so reading the fly balls in the air really helped with my timing with heading the balls in there, I think, because um, yeah, ha reading the balls in the air is so important. And I think that really elevated my game because I, I played softball since I was like eight years old. So that's kind of just been in my, you know, it's second nature to me now. So things like that really, really helped my game. Which is great to hear. And, you know, having those access to various sports and activities can really, mm -hmm. you know, benefit you. And, you know, another topic is when you look at young players and they're, they're just being pushed with football, 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 and they're not having exposure mm -hmm. to any other sports. You know, for example, we've done netball in terms of a warm up with the boys, you know, no, no ball at feet, get them moving, talking, you know, how they receive the ball, when, throw in, developing a whole variation of skills and opening them up to a, another sport. And then suddenly you're like, well, I've never played this before. What's this got to do with football? But, and then not transferring mm -hmm. all those key skills and, and key aspects from the one sport to the other. Yeah, exactly. And just it helps, it helps you have fun. Um, I just had so much fun growing up playing all the different sports. And I think if I had only stuck with playing soccer, I might have gotten burned out just playing year round. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, even though going into college, my play wasn't as high as the other girls. It definitely took me a while to um, form that soccer intelligence, you know, where I am on the field, awareness, the, the technical stuff, because I, I was, um, I didn't start club until way later. Um, but I wouldn't change it at all because I was able to catch up and, you know, I wouldn't take away those experiences of playing uh, softball and, so and volleyball or anything. And in terms of, you know, volleyball and, and softball at a, a national level and, you know, maybe that professional status, which isn't talked about as much, but it can happen as, as such. And, you know, especially playing national mm -hmm. level, if you weren't playing soccer, would you reckon that you would be at a national level or professional in no sports and quite high? Um, I think if I really pursued softball, I could have made it or I could have at least played in college. Um, I don't even know if they have professional leagues for softball. Volleyball, I started a little bit too late. The, the players who play volleyball are incredible. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think there's, I would have played professionally for volleyball, but softball, I could have made it, um, made it in college. Definitely. You know, which, you know, great to hear, you know, having, you know, that wide range of other sports and that enjoyment from them is, is certainly there. Um, you know, snowboarding is a little bit questionable. Um, you know, it's, <laughs> it's quite a, a dangerous outgoing sport. In, in a, in Pretty a risky. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, risky, that's it. Um, but, you know, as long as you enjoy it and you have that downtime away from, you know, soccer, it's that real importance to have that balance between switching off from soccer, mm -hmm. which is really important. Yeah, agreed. And in terms of, you know, switching off and, you know, having that downtime for yourself, you know, typically when you come home from training and the day's done and, you know, you've got that free time, how do you switch off from soccer? Well, writing is a big, is a big one. Um, uh, I mean, it's not completely switching off, but I, wa I, I watch soccer all the time. <laughs> um, but I, I, I love it. And I like to paint as well. Um, just hanging out with friends, we go get coffee after trainings and hanging out with teammates, going out to get food. Um, yeah, w there is a good amount of downtime. So being able to utilize that um, 
to just relax has been really nice. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's that important in, in terms of, you know, having that downtime because of, you know, how intense it is from playing, from training, everything that's related mm -hmm. to you, just even in a training session. And, you know, you stipulate that across a week and how much information has been taken on. And, you know, then even the outside world kicks in of all your, your natural pressures in your personal life and then pressures from the fans or the media and everything adds up. So switching off from it, you know, and having that time away from it is, is really important and just the go and express yourself and do things in other ways, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's good. You need to, you definitely need some time to grow as a person um, and, you know, reconnect with yourself and, you know, eat, sleep, breathe. Soccer isn't, isn't healthy at times. You have to, you know, do things, find things that you enjoy outside. And yeah, I think it's very important. No, absolutely. And, uh, you know, being exposed to, you know, the great cultures and, you know, the food and the change of environments and mm -hmm. everything that comes with it. Is it quite hard to stay disciplined when there's so much access to, a, you know, that amazing food and everything that's on offer when you're abroad? Oh, it totally is. Because <laughs> that's the, uh, one of my favorite parts of traveling is trying all the food. And um, I wouldn't say I'm super disciplined with my, with my nutrition. Um, I think... You know, I've been playing long enough where I, I know nutrition is important, but I also know that I can I can play and still enjoy all the all the yummy foods. So um, I'm not too strict on myself. <laughs> I eat tacos all the time out here, and you know I, I don't feel I don't feel it when I'm training. So I'm just going to continue to do it. <laughs> as long as there's that balance for me, it's worth it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, it's slowly disappearing whilst enjoying it. Um, and, you know, if, mm -hmm. if it was itself out, but, you know, it's it, enjoying being young and enjoy being those experiences while you're away and, you know, making the most of your time being abroad because, you know, a few interviewees I spoke to said they've been abroad and it's been difficult, you know, especially being away from family and, you know, friends and everything that comes with it in terms of different environments and, you know, cultures adapting to it and the different language and how there can be barriers. But then on the flip side, mm -hmm. in terms of your experiences, going out and, you know, enjoying and making the most of it whilst you're out there, whilst you're young at this age, whilst the opportunity is there, is it, it, certainly make the most of it while you can. Yeah, absolutely. And the time goes by so fast. Usually a season's like 10 months a year and it goes by like this. And so I realized that you really have to take advantage of every single you know, opportunity that comes up while in a different country. Like if you have an off day and some of your teammates are going to that certain spot, you got to go with them because you probably won't get the chance. Or, you know, if you're walking down the street and you see a really cool store, just go in there because, you know, you're going to forget about it or you're not going to have time later. So just really taking advantage of every opportunity you can. And yeah, it, it's so important because I mean, obviously I'm here to play soccer, but you know, it's those experiences as well that I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. Absolutely. Experiencing the, the culture and the cities and the people. So I think that's just as important. And, you know, when it comes to having those contracts and, you know, those those opportunities to, you know, sit down and, you know, look at, you know, where you're going to go next and what countries, is it often at times is, you know, the norm for a club to offer only a one-year contract? Or is there more scope to, you know, more of two, three years at times? Um, I think we, it's both. So for me, um, you know, I always like to sign for one year just because two or three years is kind of a big, um, big commitment, especially if I haven't, you know, had experience in that country or with the team, you know, after playing in Mexico, if I want to re-sign with this team, then I would sign for maybe like two, three years because I already know you know what the club is all about i already know what i'm getting myself into but just jumping into a new country a new league a new team going for like two three years that's definitely a big commitment um so you have to be like really sure that that's what what you want to do um but you know it really just depends on the on the player and the club absolutely and you know in that case you know it's great that you, you look at it from that one year perspective where, you know, you might have another player in, in that sense where like they couldn't cope with only a one year and then suddenly, you know, four or five years have passed and they've been with four or five different clubs across different countries. And for them, they haven't been able to cope with that continuous change and continuous move and whatnot. Whereas, you know, on the flip side with you, you might go, right, um, 
I've really enjoyed those five years. I've enjoyed five different countries, five different clubs. Mm -hmm. I've encapsulated all this experience in five years, and I really love the five years, whereas someone else could absolutely hate those five-year periods. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I guess it depends what the player wants as well, because for me, uh, I mean, eventually I'll definitely want to settle down and you know have a team where I feel this is my home and this is where I want to stay for the next few years. But right now I'm kind of just checking out the world and – you know, like playing with different styles and meeting new people. So right now I'm okay with just jumping around. Um, but definitely within the next next two years, I'll want to find a place where I feel really settled. And, and I would like to sign, you know, a couple year contract. And, you know, um, in, in consideration to all the amazing places that you have been, such as Los Angeles, you know, um, you know, coming from there in the South and, you know, America, um, and being out in Mexico, being out in Serbia, and, you know, the, the, being out in Spain, if there, so, so, you know, you might pick one of those countries, but if there was one country in the world that, you know, they said, right, you can come here, you've got any choice, and you can go there, what what country would it be? It would either be, it would be Italy, probably. Yeah, I would love to play in Italy. That's That's one of my dreams. <laughs> Italy or Portugal. I love I love the beaches and I love Europe too. I really I can't wait to go play there again. Um, definitely want to spend spend more time out there. You know that and that's you know again amazing to hear because you know you might find a player here typically in 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 Britain and you know they're playing national league and then suddenly they can't wait to go on holidays to go on the beaches. But for you, you know, you might finish training and go, oh, what are you up to tonight? Oh, I'm just gonna go down the beach on Me in, in Mexico and just. <laughs> chill out and relax and you know oh, it's only going to be like true. 60 degrees and so it's that incredible life which you are living and you know it's an uh -huh. amazing story and you know i think you've definitely got an opportunity for a vlog there and certainly extending on all the writing that you are doing because you know just the insights to your life is is truly amazing and exciting just to hear about it itself thank you thank you yeah it it has been such a, a great great experience that nobody really knows about so that's why I kind of wanted to share. I know people might be interested. Um, yeah, and I'm happy people are enjoying it. <laughs> no, absolutely. And, you know, at times it can be so difficult to go abroad and go into a dressing room and, you know, introduce yourself as a new player and try and, you know, f mm -hmm. you know, slot in as such. But when you've had the the experience in your, all, all the places that you've been, I suppose going into a dressing room is, you know, and, and introducing yourself, being like, I'm here and I'm, part, I'm, I'm here to be part of this can be quite easy in that sense because of the experience you have. Yeah, each each year it's definitely easier and easier. And, you know, the things that I've learned were if you just try and learn the language, if you just, you know, if you really genuinely are curious about their culture and their language and you just care, then players will respect you and, and welcome you fast. Um, so that's what I've learned. And it's worked for me so far. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's working really well. And, you know, they're, they're so lucky to have you in their change room and part of their team. And, you know, it's, it's great to have you a part of that. And, you know, if, if we were to go on the flip side of that and you, you weren't playing and you weren't in, involved in any sports, what would you be doing now in, in your career? Um, I always wanted to be a nurse. So right after college when I didn't know how to – play abroad or get recruited um I got accepted into nursing school and I was actually working as a caregiver for the elderly and then the opportunity to go play in Spain came up and I decided you know nursing school is always going to be there being able to play abroad isn't so I decided to go go play abroad instead but I think you know after I'm done playing and retire I'll probably do something in, in the medical field, maybe maybe nursing. I don't know. We'll see. Um, we'll see when that time comes. But, yeah, I would probably be a nurse. And, you know, when you you retire, you know, hopefully that's a long time away for you and you can enjoy mm -hmm. many more years of this, you know, amazing lifestyle you have, you know, to sort of go, right, I'm going to go into nursing and explore what, you know, my other interests are, you know, sort of to go, right, I was a footballer and now I'm a nurse, sort of you know, looks at contrast of two different lives within themselves, you know? Mm hmm Yeah, that's going to be a huge change. <laughs> I don't know how how I'll be able to handle that, but, um, you know, 
it, it'll be good to have um, the experience of playing abroad. And I think, you know, that teaches you so many life lessons that can you can incorporate in any job that you do. So I think I think it'll help help with my next step in life. Absolutely. Definitely. And, you know, many footballers you speak to, you know, they say when they retire, they can't cope without the game. They have to be involved in the media or mm-hmm. coaching for them and they have to stay within it. But in that sense for you, just switching off and going, do you know what? That was part of my life. I've done that and, you know, I'm finished with it. And now I'm just going to, you know, I say just going to be. Being a nurse is an amazing accomplishment within itself. And that's what my mate in California is actually out doing. He's studying to be a nurse. Um, but, and, you know, to be a nurse and to make the impact of people's lives, but to switch off from football and go into nursing and, you know, walk around in the hospital and such, and people might not know that you were a professional. You wouldn't find many professionals who would do that, but to switch off and then go into nursing and, you know, go in a different direction in life is, you know, open to all the experience that you've had and, you know, amazing that you want to continue to impact people's lives. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. Maybe, you know, when I retire, I will decide that I can't live without the game and I want to do something um, in the football world. Um, We'll see. (laughs) Because right now I can't imagine my life without it. Um, but I also want to be a nurse, so we'll, we'll honestly, we'll see what happens, but, um, (laughs) yeah, that does sound really hard to just shut, shut, shut the, um, the sports aspect out of my life. (laughs) But it's incredible that you, you know, you, you sort of got that backup plan and, you know, you got those sort of thoughts in, Mm -hmm. right? this could happen or I could do this after I stop playing because you know many people like you have said oh right football is my life I can't imagine my life without it but in some sense when you say to them right what would you be doing they'd be like oh and then suddenly you've got this sort of you know strand which is there and then you can tug at it and go right I might go down that route you know sort of keeps those options open for you and in terms of you know other female footballers that you have seen give up and you know others that you've you've been in and around and have part of your team do you think it's important for them to have those options open all the time because you know of, of the pay gap in in the female game at the minute yeah definitely you really need a backup plan and plus with like injuries and you know there's so many situations that can occur where unfortunately you, you have to stop playing um so i think it's always good to have a backup plan also just with life in general it's good to have different interests and not just be focused on one thing. Um, I think that makes you a better person as a whole. Um, so I definitely think having a backup option is is important, or at least having different interests where you can explore once you're done um, done playing. No, absolutely. And you know, having those interests is, is is you know is really important. And you know, when we talk about you know the the game itself for football isn't the most stable or most sustainable of games in general for anyone around the world no matter what you know unless you're right Mm -hmm. at the the highest elite like Ronaldo and you've made you know millions and millions and millions and have endless amount of sponsorships etc but you know your contract could retire at any time or injury kicks in and you know suddenly or covid kicks in and then sponsors have lost money and they pull out and contracts are not there and teams are going right we can't afford to have a female side anymore is there less sustainability in the female game entirely compared to the male game? Because, you know, there, there isn't that much backing in contrast to how much is in the male game, for example. Yeah, I definitely think so. Um, also, the the female clubs that don't have a men's side to give them sponsorships, they, they really struggle as well. Um, and, you know, yeah, it, it, it's definitely tough on on the woman's side because just there's such a lack of funding there's such a lack of funding and so anything can happen where you know the club isn't able to financially support the players anymore or um yeah and especially in smaller countries like serbia um and there's so many other professional leagues in all the smaller countries in europe i know they struggle a lot um and and, and it's tough it, it's definitely tough because those players want to grow, but unfortunately they just don't have that support um, in order to grow into the players they want to be. Yeah. No, absolutely. And, you know, in terms of, the, you know, females themselves, it's very difficult in a sense of, all right, you know, I, oh, I've met someone and 
oh, the, the, the family option is, is an option now and I'm thinking of having a, a child and then suddenly they have to plan at least a year of their life, obviously for maternity and then they might go, do you know what, I want a bit more time to bring up my young child. And, you know, for them to mm-hmm. have that year out on the flip, you know, you might have a male who goes, well, I can keep playing and they, they can just come home. And, yeah. and But for a female and then coming back on terms of, you know, that physicality and then the exhaustion of you know everything of having that young toddler and that attachment there's so much attached to that and you know it's not easy to sort of go right coach I, i'm gonna have a year out now because i'm gonna start my family but then you're sort of like right mm-hmm. do i postpone my family or do i keep playing and you know try to make the most of it or do i have a, a child now and could this impact my career here and now for example you know yeah, yeah, I have so much respect for all the all the players that are mothers. I I really have no idea how, how they do it. It's it's absolutely incredible. Like you know, we have a a player on our team who's a mom and then looking up to all the players on the in the NWSL who are parents as well and still just incredible players. You know, it's it's amazing that they could go through you know, being pregnant and giving birth to a child and then being a mother 24 seven and still play at that high level. It's pretty incredible what these, what these women are doing. And, you know, I, I have no idea in my future <laughs> how that's going to work out. Um, or just in, in regards to contracting and, you know, how you even plan that. Um, I guess the time will come <laughs> eventually, but you know, it's, it's something you really have to think about you know, once, once you're ready to have a kid. Um, but yeah, it, it's definitely, definitely a confusing process, I would say. You know, and it's, it can create much difficulty in your own head to sort of go, mm-hmm. right, What? how how can this look for me? Or how is it going to happen? Mm-hmm. Because you don't have that crystal ball to go, right, if I have this child, all right, that's the outcome. Or, oh, I don't have this child, this is definitely going to happen. And it's that, it's that realistic thing in life for anyone, no matter any point of, they don't have that crystal ball. And it can be difficult sort of to try and plan ahead and make those judgments and to do what's right for you here and now, as well as thinking long term. And, it can be so difficult to sort of balance your professional career with, you know, your personal life, especially for a female footballer um, and being out in those smaller countries, as you say, especially when there aren't males teams to mm-hmm. support the male females in terms of the sponsorships that are brought in, for example. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, it's definitely tough, especially because I think our generation as football players, we're paving, paving the way. There is no past, players that had to really deal with this because they kind of just retired before they had children so now you know now everybody's trying to figure out this situation of you know um how clubs are gonna work with players so they can have uh, maternity leave and um all those things you need once having a kid and contracting and all that stuff so right now i think everything's just in the process of giving, getting figured out and we're the ones that are leading that leading that you know it's amazing to be part of what you're achieving now in terms of being a, a professional female athlete and professional female soccer player and uh you know to, to be part of the way the game has changed and to also set the the tone for how the game is going to look in the future but then it's also a case of that you could end up you know collectively as a, a you know, a, a wider audience of, you know, female players across the world that are missing out right now because of the slow change that's coming through to support yourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's it been difficult because for me, where I am in my, my career, you know, I'm not making enough money where I can save. I'm kind of just living paycheck, paycheck to paycheck and, um, you know, hopefully it grows to where players don't have to worry about the income they're making and can just know that, you know, they can just work on their play, work on their craft and know that they'll financially be okay. Um, and I think it is growing enough to soon where, you know, there's going to be enough um, financial stability for players. But I know so many players that have extra side jobs and they're just exhausted because it's it's such a toll on your body and having to do an extra job as well it's really it's really tough 
Absolutely. And when you think of being a professional, you know, athlete or professional sports person, a lot of people will be like, right, oh, if you're waiting a second job and then, you know, suddenly you, you land a new contract somewhere else and, oh, you can give up that second job and you're going to be paid well and you're going to be living a lifestyle of luxury. Um, but sometimes it's not. And in cases, you might find some sports people going, do you know what? My second job is paying me more than what this is and I'm going to have to give up playing. And, you know, people don't really yeah. think of that or see that. And it's very difficult to give up being a professional in something because the second job is paying you more. And it, it can be so, you know, sad to see so many people leave the game and especially females in that sense because they have to do what pays for them and to give up that dream and that amazing pathway that they were on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that's why so many players from the U.S. don't continue with their career because we are so um, driven financially um, that they just decide, oh, I'm going to have a career in what I majored in because, you know, that's just what our society is taught. As you finish your college degree, you go get a job. Like, you need to start earning money as soon as possible to provide for your future. And, uh, you know, you really have to... I mean, it, it sucks, but you have to be okay with not making a lot, a lot of money. You really have to do it because you love the sport so much. And, you know, that's what's cool about being on a team with girls um, because everybody has that same goal. Like, we just love it so much. We're not in it for the money. We're here because we love to play more than anything. So that that's, that's I guess, the positive of it. But, you know, I hope one day that there's – there's going to be enough um, financial aid for, for players to, you know, just be able to focus on their craft instead of being worried financially. Absolutely. And, you know, in that sense, would you advocate, you know, making the most of, you know, what you've done, you know, being young, going out, traveling the countries, try not to get settled too much, pursue everything and just enjoy life for what it is in that sense, in terms of thinking too much around what could bog you down and, you know, really ground you into a lifestyle when there's so much out there like you've experienced. Yeah, I completely recommend it. Um, you definitely have to have the personality for it. <laughs> you know, some people, they really like, they really like structure and, you know, knowing what they're going to get themselves into. But for people who like to travel and just love to play, like, uh, yeah, this has been the best decision of my life for sure. And I recommend it to, to anyone who, who wants to have an experience like this. Fantastic. And in that sense, when you look at, you know, players on paper or you might be scouting them and suddenly, you know, a scout comes in and says X, Y, and Z about, you know, uh, this player, um, you know, some people might go, right, this player is really defensive, he's strong at the back, uh, he controls the game well, there's no nonsense. If you had to uh, wrap around uh, 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 a statement or, or some keywords around Addison, what would they be? I would say I'm really good in the air. Um, love to slide tackle and do whatever I can to save, <laughs> save the goal. Um, definitely defensive minded but also love to play out of the back passing wise um yeah that's how i would describe myself as a player <laughs> there you are there's your next transfer sorted just off that little clip there and a few highlights off your youtube and we're ready to go we're, we're securing the next transfer already perfect <laughs> <laughs> and on, on the back of you, you know, we, we've highlighted, you know, some of the five key skills that you've talked about. But if you if you were to sort of go right from all my life experience and in playing and what I've seen now, if you could give out one key message to any young player or any athlete coming through, what, what would it be? It would be that your potential is limitless. You you're the only person that can determine your future. There's no coach that can tell you, oh, you can't make it. It really, it's all, it's you. You, If you want to go play at the highest level, you can do it if you work hard enough. Like you are in control of yourself. And if you work hard enough and you dream hard enough, anything is possible. And what an amazing quote to sort of wrap up with and, uh, you know, sort of, have out there and, and you know sort of start off and share out there which i think is going to be a, a fantastic uh insight and, and share with everyone who's listening and, and you know certainly gonna utilize that quite often um in in that sense is this your first podcast episode or interview as such that is going to be shared out there yeah um i actually 
Well, first podcast, yes. I've had a couple interviews, but this is my first podcast, so it's been really fun. Thank you. That's right. No <laughs> problem. So I'm really glad that we could have, you know, that you've given the time and we were able to arrange this. And, you know, it's been really ins- insightful. And, you know, it, it's been, you know, you have such a bubbly personality and, you know, that smile and that energy and that radiance that you capture just in front of everything that's there. And you talk about that experience and everything that, that brings into anyone who would watch this, even, a, you know, a scout or, or coach looking at this, I think it encapsulates a fantastic person and player which is available there and you know the amazing accolades that you have and you know you i hope that you continue to build on the successes that you have and you know it's been really great to speak to you and i'm so glad that you've given up the time especially in your hectic schedule um to to come on which i'm really really grateful for Thank you, Luca. I've really, really enjoyed this. It's been fun. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate That's right. It. No problem. So I'm really glad. And, you know, in a, in a few months after you've played a few more games and, you know, the, the season's opened up in Mexico a bit more, it'd be great to have you on again and sort of look at that contrast between here and now and reflect over that season, which would be great. And I hope you keep up the blog and keep in touch. But uh, it's, it's been fantastic. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll do this again soon. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you very much. Well, have a great day and take care. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Thank you. All right, bye. Bye.